Now we have Steve Shalou, a representative of West Point, Army West Point, and tonight is a special enshrinement of the Army-Navy game, just hundreds upon hundreds of years of history, and Steve represented Army from 1988 through 1991 in terms of playing football. He graduated in 1992, and he joins us now. Steve, uh, this is a great evening for everybody involved, and of course for Philadelphia being a host for so many years of the Army-Navy game. What does it mean to be here tonight and uh, and be here on behalf of the Army Navy game and all its history. Well, uh, thank you for having me here, and it's a tremendous honor. Uh, you know, Army Navy has a special place uh, in in my heart and my teammates' hearts, and 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 I think it's a it's a brotherhood that goes across both academies. Um, none of us are really anticipating ever playing pro football or um, are doing those type of things. So we're. We're out there for the pure love of the game, and Philadelphia is a tremendous host for that type of game. So it's 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 pure, it's 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 great football, and it's just a, a lot of fun, a lot of fun, and and you know, years later we still get together and and revel in in the memories of those games. One of the most poignant moments of each of those games is after the game, when both teams go and face their their fellow members in those prospective uh, institutions. And when you're standing on the field and you're hearing that song and you're looking up and seeing all your comrades up there, what is that moment like for those of us that can never hope to experience something like that? Well, there, there are a number of different emotions you can go through, uh, whether it be uh, hopefully you're singing second, that means you won the game. That's right. <laughs> uh, and, and then these, there, there's the emotion of when I was a, a first year or my senior year, um, singing that alma mater for the last time out front of my mm. classmates and peers, uh, knowing that uh, the next helmet I strapped on was going to be uh, Kevlar and, and was to lead uh, young men and women into, into battle. So it, it has a, 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 a tremendous amount of, uh, of pride and a tremendous amount of, uh, of, of uh, emotion that's, that's tied to it, um, knowing that hundreds of years of, of tradition is all culminating at one point. And we appreciate your service and all that you, you've done uh, at Army West Point. And then, of course, after that, if you could describe for us what happened for you after college. Where were you deployed? And what was your experience like serving the military in that way? Well, uh, you know, when people come to me and say thank you for, our, uh, for my service, is actually all my pleasure. Uh, the, the experience, the ability to go to a, a top-notch school, the ability to uh, serve with the finest young men and women in all of these services, um, it, it, was, it was my pleasure. So thank you all for that opportunity. But uh, from, from uh, graduating West Point, I, I, I stuck around and, and was a graduate assistant coach for the, for the prep school. And then after that, I went to flight school and, and uh, ended up flying spy planes for the Army. Um, and I was uh, uh, immediately sent over to, to South Korea. Um, and then from there, I went to Fort Hood. And, and the world, when I was in the Army, was, was pre-9-11. So it was, a, it was a much different mission. It was a much different situation uh, than it is today. Uh, but we, uh, uh, we, we, were, we were ready to fight, and we, we did some great stuff. Unbelievable stories, I and mean, whenever you have the opportunity to speak to a military veteran, we speak to one right now, uh, Steve Shalou. Great to have you on the show. And uh, what was your favorite moment from one of the games that you played? Either if even it wasn't the game here in, in Philadelphia, I understand one of the games of the four you played was up in the Meadowlands. But uh, what was your favorite moment of any of those Army Navy games that you had the pleasure of being a part of? Well, there were a lot of really great memories. Uh, the one that sticks out was uh, in uh, the 1990 game. We were driving up and down the field, and and we had uh, we ended up winning that ball game. But uh, uh, there was a goal line play where Mike Mayweather, who was a, uh, a running back for Army, was a, a phenomenal phenomenal athlete. But uh, they ran a, a counter play up the middle. It was right behind uh, where I was, and uh, we got the hole open. He scored, and uh, I kind of. Uh, gave a touchdown sound, a sign through the pile of in carnage of people, <laughs> and that ended up on the Philadelphia Inquirer front page the next day. And and to see my ugly mug uh, <laughs> on that page, as you know, I looked like I was in more pain than I was in in, uh, in happiness. But it was uh, to see that and be able to have that picture, you know, in my office uh, is a is a pretty cool thing. I mean, with the Army Navy games, too, big, being being as big as I mean, you have your own weekend still to this day with college football i don't That's think right. another game is played maybe 
uh, lower division games, but you know, basically that's Army Navy weekend, you know, and everyone knows that. Now, how do you feel uh, with the the changing of the home, uh, the cities, the sites where the games are played? Did you did you do you like it better when there's like, for instance, Philadelphia, and when it, well, you know, when every game was in Philadelphia, as opposed to the off and on thing? I mean, how do you feel as, as the players? Because it seemed to me there was a certain you know, camaraderie and feeling of, of doing it in Philadelphia, you know, the history of the city and whatnot. And I think that may be a little bit lost now uh, moving forward. So, you know, what, what I'll start off by saying, it's a, it's a great question. I'll start off by saying that I, I am not on the committee that chooses the bowl sites for, for Army West Point. So what I say is purely my opinion because I will get in trouble. I don't want to get anybody in trouble here. The opinions of Steve Shalou <laughs> of that are that of. They're, they're of mine and mine only. Um, and I don't want them to lose any negotiating power in the future. That's There's fair. no other place that, that the Army Navy needs to be than, than Philadelphia. I mean, in my opinion. And, and you know, I was down in Baltimore and, and I'll definitely be at the Meadowlands. But when it comes down to it, Philadelphia is is synonymous with Army Navy and vice versa, it, it, and it's it's where it needs to be. I'm glad that the next four out of five years it's here. Uh, we're excited about that. But you know, driving over the Walt Whitman Bridge with you know a hundred of your brothers, seeing the vet at that time, in in the off in the distance, and just I mean, still gives me chills every day. I drive over the Walt Whitman Bridge today. I can still kind of see the backdrop of the vet being there and knowing that I'm going to, you know, going to go into battle. And that's the way it should be. And, and Philadelphia is the, the, the city that needs to have it. And, and I love it here. And uh, I'm, I'm totally honored to be able to represent both academies today in accepting this, this award um, for, for that. I was talking with Steve Shalou here, a representative of Army West Point a special enshrinement of the Army-Navy game tonight here at the Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame induction dinner. Steve, you mentioned Veterans Stadium, and, and unfortunately there's an increasingly large group of grade schoolers and, and junior high folks that really don't remember the vet, and that's a little scary. But for those that maybe didn't have the opportunity or those that just want to rem reminisce, what were some of the maybe not so great but still endearing portions and facets to that, that old that old stadium so the 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 vet was so for for, for the high schoolers or grade schoolers that uh, that want to uh, mimic the vet take some old carpeting <laughs> put it in your driveway <laughs> with no padding um, and then put so you know put a, uh, mm -hmm. a you know raise one portion of it so you can trip and fall over it as the second the second base cutout was um, and you're, you're going to be able to mimic how it was. Now, I wouldn't pass it up for the world. That was, that was, that was the most fun you could ever have. The funny thing is um, the turf at the vet was actually nicer than what we had at Mikey Stadium. So mm -hmm. that was hard. So uh, uh, it, was, it, was, it wasn't a big deal to us. But, you know, when you, you stand at the 50-yard line and you look up and the way that it was, it was almost a, a coliseum-type feel, versus the open air stadiums of today. It, it just, it was, people were sitting on you and vertically and it was loud and it was fun. And it was, that you could, they had the smell of pretzels and it was just a, a, an unbelievable feeling to, to walk out there the first time with your, your, your t-shirt on and it was 10 degrees and you just kind of looked around and you were in awe because you knew the great players that had played there like, like uh, Jaws and, and Randall Cunningham that are going to be honored here tonight. Uh, it was just, a, uh, I, I, it, it was pure, as pure as the game was. What was it like to win? Get back in the winning column after so many years. Just just last year. It, you know, it. I, I'm embarrassed to say that I was amidst a, a, a bunch of gentlemen to, that that all of us were in tears. So uh, uh, it was uh, it was the release of 14 years of pure frustration. Uh, we have an absolute great coach that is that is turning the program around, and and now you look at today uh, where Air Force Navy and Army all have competitive programs, it's, it's kind of the way it should be to, to show that people can go and have 21 credit hours in a semester and learn calculus and physics and still compete on a, on a high level, uh, both academically and physically. Uh, it just sets an example for the rest of the NCAA to say, yeah, it can be done, and, and, and if you want to do it right, you can find a way.
Final question for you. We'll get you out of here. you got a lot to, to do tonight, a lot more interviews to do, I'm sure. But being here tonight, representative of Army West Point, how did you get the opportunity, and what does it mean to you to be sitting here, not necessarily with Eric and me, but to be sitting, <laughs> to be sitting at the dinner tonight and, and be honored? This evening, well, it, you know, it, it, it's absolutely humbling that, I, but they're not honoring me, and I, I just happen to be my my best ability was availability, so uh, I, I was here uh, uh, and and able to uh, to to to, uh, to be here to to, to represent. Uh, and I think it, both academies, because Navy has a game tonight against Te Temple, and 51 weeks out of the year we root for Navy. We hope that, that they do well, and I hope, you know, and I might get in trouble by saying I hope they beat Temple tonight. But uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it, it, it's definitely an honor. Uh, this, this game is bigger than any one person, any one error, any one, you know, one team. So um, hopefully I can represent uh, the, the academies well. And, uh, and and it's truly, uh, truly humbling. Really, really nice to meet you. Thanks for taking some time and sitting down with us. And congratulations again. It's, it's a wonderful night for the institution. No, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot, sure. Steve.